The time has come, ladies and gentlemen, for us to return to the Sonic the Hedgehog series. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Let's Play Sonic the Hedgehog CD's 2011 PC release, because... Honestly, I just feel like playing this version because it plays better. Uh, starting off, for options-wise, uh, the thing is about Sonic CD is that... Uh, the PC version added a couple of things. First off, there's a spin dash mode, which allows you to choose between the Sonic 2 and original Sonic CD version. I'm using the Sonic CD version. And Sonic CD has two soundtracks, a US and a Japanese European one. Uh, I'll go into more about how I'm handling that in a moment, but for right now, let's just start a new game and watch a really cool animated intro. Notable, on the original Sega CD port of this game, that cutscene was compressed down both frame rate wise, color wise, and just in general to take up like a third of the screen because <laughs> Sega CD could not do well FMB very well. I then welcome to our first zone, Palm Tree Panic, and we have a bit of interesting things to go over here, namely Sonic CD's gimmicks. First off, the spin dash is not as good as it would be in Sonic 2, which was released after this game originally. Uh, instead, you have to actually charge it up a bit more before you can actually use it. However, to make up for that, Sonic has a super peel out ability you use by pressing up in the jump button. Throughout each level, there are past and future signs. This plays into the game's main gimmick of time travel. Uh, if you hit a sign and then go a certain speed for a certain time, you'll be warped into that time zone. Each level has three, technically four versions, past, future, and present, uh, where there are two futures depending on something you do in the past. Because you see, Sonic CD is a game that has two endings. Uh... The bad one you get for just beating the game uh, through normal means, just going through and not really caring about anything else. And the true ending, which you get by one of two methods. Either destroying the robot generator that is found in each act's uh, past area, or by a second method I'll be going over at the end of the zone. Now, I'm not doing the robot generators for the most part. I'll be talking about where they are in that uh, respective zone's past. But otherwise, uh, I'm just going through the second method because I find it a lot easier to go for because I don't feel like memorizing Sonic CD's level design. It's already kind of chaotic as it is. Plus, since I would have to memorize basically two versions of the, of the zone, that's uh, not the best idea for me. In terms of where Palm Tree Panic Act 1's robot generator is, I'm already past it. Uh, uh, hello there, Amy. Uh, you look different than you would in later games. Yeah, that's actually supposed to be Amy Rose. Uh, in terms of where Act 1's robot generator is, it's in the past on the very last high platform, right before the goal the post thing here. Also, as you saw, there was a giant ring there. Similarly, the Sonic 1 reached the end of a level with 50 rings. You find a giant ring you can jump into to access the special stage. Sonic CD's special stages are interesting and a lot more playable on the PC port, I can tell you that for a fact. In that, we're in a giant Mode 7 like area where we have to destroy all the UFOs. Some UFOs drop rings, which basically are just there for score purposes, I believe, in the special stages. Others drop speed shoes, which speed you up, and god, you do not want to get those, even though you have to get them to uh, finish the stage. And there are obstacles all over the place that mimic your terrain, basically speed ups, little spike pits, and such, but the biggest things you have to fear are the water around you. Because as you can see, on the very center of the screen on the top, there's a timer. If that reaches down to zero, 
you're forced out of the stage. Around, I think it's either 20 seconds or 30, I forget which at the moment. A special UFO will descend in the center of the special stage. That will add, I want to say, 20 more seconds to your timer. And that UFO spawns infinitely. For destroying all the UFOs within a specific special stage, we get the first of the Time Stones, which are basically this game's Chaos Emeralds. Get them all? You get the true ending no matter what. In fact, you guarantee a good future in every zone, I believe, as well. Because the thing is, uh... If you destroy a robot generator in a specific level's past, the future changes. Uh, normally, if you just go to the future right off the start, you go into a bad future, where things are generally more dangerous. Uh, more obstacles in your way, enemies are more dangerous, so on and so forth. It's just not a very fun place to be. However, for destroying the robot generator and you go to the future after that, you get a good future where things are much safer. And you might be noticing, uh, the level melody is a bit different. The way I'm handling the game's two separate soundtracks, is that I'm playing Act 1 with the American soundtrack, and Act 2 with the Japanese, as well as the boss fight. So this is just my way of getting both soundtracks some love. Honestly, both soundtracks have a lot of good songs on them, though I'll be completely frank with you, if I'm playing the game normally on my own, I'm just listening to the Japanese soundtrack because I think it fits the game a bit more. Now, interesting developmental trivia that basically every Sonic fan knows. Uh, Sonic 2 in Sonic CD... were... Uh, at least for a portion of time, even though uh, this game got released almost a year later, I believe. Uh, Sonic 2 and CD were basically co-developed. Uh, simult uh, developed simultaneously, rather. Uh, Sonic 2 was developed by a Sega team on the American state side, whereas CD was developed in Japan alongside the series creator. So, because of that, there's a lot of inconsistencies about mechanics that are shared between the two, like the spin dash and such. However, I guess either due to lack of sales for the game or better reception, uh, they decided to take a lot of the Sonic 2 mentalities for the series from there on. You can even especially see that with uh, Sonic Sprite. Uh, Sonic Sprite here, while it has more animation frames, in fact, more animations in general, uh, this is very much just a slightly altered version of his Sonic 1 sprite, whereas Sonic 2 gave him a slightly more altered sprite overall. Uh, namely, his blue was changed a bit, I believe. Now, in terms of where the robot generator is for Palm Tree Panic Act 2, uh, yet again, it's still in the past, as they always are. Uh, this is actually a level where I end up showing off where it is, though, comparative to the first one. It's about three-fourths of the way to the level on the highest platform. In fact, I think we're coming up on it now, even. Also, I apologize for one thing that you're going to see throughout this game, is that until I get all the time stones, I play the levels a bit more slowly than I should. That's because I want to make sure not only do I have 50 rings when I reach the goalpost, I want to make sure I keep those 50 rings. Also, as you saw, I just destroyed the robot generator, so now if I head into the future, I would get a good future. Act 3 is where things are going to change a little bit, but I'll get more into that in a moment. What I just destroyed right there is a Metal Sonic projector. More on who Metal Sonic is, uh, later. But as for what that does, it does nothing in the main game. It's basically just there to give a little graphical effect. Squirrels will be jumping all over the screen if I was in the present and such. It's there to be cute. Uh, in the PC version, they added a trophy slash achievement for destroying them all throughout the game. Which, if I also recall, uh, in the original version and PC release, if you destroy all 12 of them, I think you also get a sort of you are a super player message at the end of the credits, which, you know, that's not very interesting. Also, I should note, uh, I love the Japanese special stage music. <laughs> I love the Japanese soundtrack in general, but I love this song. Almost makes going to the special stages worth it. Now, one thing I should mention about the special stages in the PC release is that since the game auto-saves, uh, there is a bit of something you can pull with it. If you're about to lose one, you can press start, go to exit to menu, and then go back to your file select, in which case it'll load you back in, in that special stage. So. If you're smart enough to remember that you can actually press the start button right when your timer's about to go down to zero, you can save yourself and give yourself another try. In fact, I do that for a large amount of this LP. Uh, there are a few times where I completely screw up and I will be editing out those attempts uh, whatever way I find humorous, I suppose. Uh, but that's what's going to be happening with that. Uh, it's actually very, similarly, uh, very similar to what Sonic 4 would eventually do. And that's the uh, time UFO I was talking about earlier. Okay, so it's 30 seconds. Uh, those are very useful. Make sure to get them in every opportunity you can. 
And with that, we're going to be heading into Act 3. Act 3s of any specific zone in this game are a bit interesting in that they're always in the future environments. Be they the bad future or the good future. Uh, if you didn't get both robot generators in the prior two acts, it would be, uh, it's locked into a bad future, though. Uh, the moment I believe we get the time stones, though, it is automatically made a good future, I think. Also, I love basically all the bad future themes. They're so good. Now, this is our first boss stage, uh, uh, obviously. However, it's a bit easy by the fact that they gave us an invincibility box, which, well, makes the boss a bit of a pathetic fight. Uh, I'm gonna just quickly go over the boss, I suppose. The boss of this is the Egg HVC 001. Uh, it's basically a little boxing robot with chicken legs that he tries to punch you with, but I'm not sure he can actually damage you with it. Because the thing is about a lot of C Sonic CD bosses, as you can see, that only took three shots, whereas they usually took six to take six to eight in the other games. Sonic CD's boss design mentality is less so hit them a certain amount of times, more so hit them at all. Uh, they're, they're very much puzzle bosses, and by the way, I love the Japanese, uh, not only the Japanese level uh, end theme, but also the Japanese boss theme. Either way, with that, I'm technically ending this off here, but we got about three minutes left in the video. That's because I'm showing you the other two versions of the intro. Uh, the animated intro has three specific versions with three different songs. The one you saw at the start was the U.S. soundtrack, Sonic Boom. And then there are two versions of the Japanese-European intro song, You Can Do Anything. The first one you're going to be seeing is the, as it was presented in the original 93 release, lyrics and everything. But for the 2011 re-release, due to licensing and rights stuff, they had to present the song lyricless. So, we're going to be taking a look with those and starting off with the next act, next part. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys then. Heaven! Big Bob! Big Alive!